In this video, we'll look at a few ways of measuring and assigning section properties or beams. You can see here we have a C channel section that's been extruded as a solid body. And first we're gonna show how to use the measure tool to measure section properties. Note that we need to turn on other measurements and we need to be sure that in preferences under measurements other, we have these properties turned on. So we need to take either edges or curves measure section properties. So here I'm going to take the, the face edges using the face edges method. And you'll see here that this returns the centroid moments of inertia. And we can save these as associative measure features. And we can also save geometry as well. And these are associative. So if this geometry changes, these metrics will update. So we're going to save most of these. And once we hit OK or apply, a measure feature gets added to our feature history. And here we can see we have both a note with the inertia and centroid and the area. And we also have the principal axes and the equivalent rectangular section. So we started with a face of a solid, but often we might need to generate some intersection curves to measure section properties. So we'll show how to do this as well. So you could create a datum plane that intersects your, your beam and use either intersection curves or a sketch. So here I'll create a sketch from that plane and I will intersect the faces of this solid with my sketch plane using the intersection curve feature. And here we can select the, the body faces and just like that, we have our section curves. And if we were to return to the measure tool, we can see that we would get the, the exact same result as when we use the face of, of a solid except this time we can take the feature curves instead of the, the edges. And if we have a look at this measurement, we can see that these, these section properties, like the uh, max principal moment of inertia, is the same as what we measured off the, the face of the solid. So, so these are two ways you can get section property measurements in the modeling environment of NX or Simpson 3D. Sometimes we might like to have some more advanced properties, however, such as shear factors or warping constants. And there is a way to do that in the FEM file. So for, first we'll have a look at creating some, some beam meshes. And when you create beam section properties, you can look at some of these more advanced properties as well. So I'm going to create two beam meshes to show two different ways of measuring section properties and designing them. And note I've also got mesh points on the end of these curves, which can be helpful for assigning loads and constraints later on. So here I'm going to use the Nastran C-beam element type, since it's an open section and the shear center and a neutral axis don't coincide. And I've pre-created some mesh collectors. So I'm going to assign one beam mesh to one mesh collector and the other beam mesh I will assign to the other mesh collector. And we're going to have a look at this, this first mesh here on the left. And here we'll show how we can use the, the P-beam type. So P-beam uh, is a bit more general than the P-beam L. P-beam L uses the Nastran library of section properties, whereas P-beam uh, relies more on uh, manually created section properties. And one way to do this is using geometry like the face of a solid or sketch curves. So we'll have a look at this face of solid method. Since we have this, this solid body for our C-channel, we can sim simply select one of the faces and we select a horizontal axis. We can take an edge off of the geometry from the horizontal axis. And you can then preview the resulting cross section. And we'll see that it's correctly identified the shear center and the centroid. Note that the uh, section Y and Z axis is always coincident with the shear center. And you can see those stress recovery points have been automatically placed at the extremes of the section. You can always add additional points as well for stress recovery. And here we can also evaluate the section properties. And here we have some additional output compared to the measure tool. So in addition to the inertias and the centroid, we also get the warping constant. And we also get these uh, shear factors. So these are useful for uh, Tomaschenko beam theory, for instance. And we can then take that uh, section property, calculate from a solid, and assign it to this mesh.
for this particular example, the way we've modeled the geometry, we need to orient the cross section uh, so that it, so it lines up. So we can do that in the mesh associated data. We can, for instance, change the element axis here to, to Z and we can put it an offset. So here I'd like my beam mesh to coincide with the centroid rather than the shear center. So I've, so I've offset it by, by that amount. Secondly, another way of getting section properties is using that NASTRAN library of standard cross sections. So for this example, we, we chose a standard shape, uh, a channel, and we can use the, the PBML physical property if it's a standard section. So we can create a, a new section property. And you'll see in the drop down here, these are all the standard NASTRAN sections. So we'll select the channel one and we can enter values or here I'm gonna use uh, expressions. And this should be identical to the section that was previously taken from a solid. Uh, but we'll go ahead and preview it here, and, and we'll see that these section properties are going to be identical to what we had before. So this would be another way of assigning a, a section property and also of computing uh, things like the warping constant using that evaluate section properties capability. The uh, next thing we'll do here is we'll just quickly orient this section. So I'll, I'll speed through this. And I'd like to show one final way of uh, getting these section properties, which is to use curves. So in our model, we created that set of intersection curves, which was represented as a sketch. So if you use the general geometry method, this allows you to select sketches. And our model had a couple of sketches. So this happens to be sketch zero. And we'll see if we preview it. And if we look at the section properties, we'll get the exact same properties as the two other methods. So this is yet another way of getting uh, section properties, uh, getting these more advanced properties. And once again, like the warping constant, and we can then assign this property to a P-beam uh, physical property if we wished. And as a final part of this demonstration, I'd like to show what would happen if we, we changed the CAD model. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna adjust so the expressions that drive the section shape. We're gonna show what happens to our measure. Uh, since the measure is associative, we'll, we'll see that it should, should update. So we're gonna change the thickness of the top and bottom flanges, which are currently one inch. We'll change it to half an inch. And you'll see that once we, we apply this change, you'll see that note on screen will update. The, uh, the inertia has changed. You'll see that the uh, equivalent rectangular section has been modified. So everything is, has been associatively uh, updated, which is really nice. So that's the benefit of having it in our feature history. And also the same happens in our FEM file. So sections that are associated to the face uh, of a solid will automatically update when that solid is modified. Um, you'll notice here in the FEM file, we have an update button. So we have to hit that update button for the, the mesh to, to process some of these uh, changes as well. So you'll see that beam mesh uh, move a bit to match the curve. And finally, uh, we had manually entered the, the offset in our mesh associated data. So we're gonna just have to go back in there and just uh, update it as we have a new offset. But th this completes demonstration on section properties.